Cowgirl, mm -hmm. Cowboy. Checkered shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, y'all. This is Marilyn. Howdy, I'm Sean. And welcome to another episode of Shrink Wrap. Today, we will be talking about a branding project that has made quite an impact, and that is Concrete Cowboy. A project that has disrupted what a concrete branding looks like, steering it away from your typical dry, cold, and hard look. So in today's video, we will be focusing on four key areas of the project. One, what was the brief? Two, the key considerations of the brief. Three, uh, what was the design process we took? And four, what was the outcome? Let's get started. Marilyn, what was the brief? The brief was to create a brand visual identity for Concrete Cowboy, which is a concrete company based in Sumbawa, Indonesia, an island that's not too far off from your hotspot destinations such as Bali. The task was to create a distinctive a memorable, iconic identity that looks bold, loud, and strong. Mm. Something that would look really different from other concrete competitors. Mm. So creating a brand for a concrete company that's in this up-and-coming development area of mm -hmm. Indonesia. So the name was already given to us. The name? I think was really, really good for the client. You know, the client came up with it. Mm -hmm. Where it's like this heroic cowboy comes into town on his horse, but here it's the cowboy in the concrete truck going to job sites and rolling into town and you know uplifting the town. I think it has a nice emotional kind mm. of connection with the otherwise kind of dry right. product and brand. So right. I think the name. Um, was great and was a really good starting point mm. for us to you know start yeah. to design. It gives concrete a lot of personality mm. beyond just how it looks. So shall we talk about the key considerations of the brief? Mm -hmm. We really needed to create a brand that would have a lot of impact. And when I say impact, meaning that really breaking the category norm of what concrete uh, branding looks like. Mm -hmm. um, Another consideration is the local community. So, you know, when they yeah. see the trucks, when they see the branding, mm -hmm. they can really rally behind it and be proud of it. It is really important to make it really localized Local. to the Indonesian community. Um, and also the challenge for us is, you know, how do we marry concrete and cowboy together? Also create a very bold and memorable distinctive. Of course. How about we talk about the design? Mm. How how do we get started? During the process, it would normally help when you make keyword associations with the words itself. Concrete, cowboy, and also the local community, mm. Indonesia. Within those keywords, we can kind of list out different elements that's associated with it and we can start to formulate what the brand identity could look like. So what you're trying to do is, you know, we have the name, mm -hmm. but what, is, what does that name stand for? Mm -hmm. What do you think about when you think of a strong cowboy? Cowboy hat, mm -hmm. sheriff's badge. Mm -hmm. Guns, but we don't want to encourage violence. That's right. Belt buckle, boots. Mm -hmm. um, Horses. Or bulls. bulls. Yeah, cowgirl. Cowboy. Checkered shirts. Yes, checkered shirts. <laughs> <laughs> One of our concepts is based on the idea of the belt buckle. So out of that word association and thinking what could be a really strong asset mm -hmm. um, to represent cowboy without being super obvious and having mm -hmm. You know, an actual cowboy. Mm -hmm. um, we thought the belt would be a really strong asset that mm -hmm. could um, deliver the brand. Mm. That was one idea. Yeah. And then the second idea we had was on the idea of bull riding, right? Yeah, bull riding. Mm. The concept that we brought forward was the belt concept, mm -hmm. um, just because that was 
a little bit more unique. The belt had that kind of credibility in it as well. Because mm. not forgetting that we, we do want to sell credible, strong concrete. So if you refer back to references of what a cowboy belt looks like, a belt buckle in, uh, specifically, it's really ornate in nature. There are a lot of elements going on, which you know we think mm. that is a great opportunity to play up on that aspect. With the ornate nature, we thought that, hey, you know, we could bring in the Indonesian traditional wood carving and bring it as part of the decorative element of the belt within the belt buckle itself. Yeah. And on top of that, we also crafted the typography to strong, yeah, bold. Yes, but also give it a little bit of a almost like a western twist to it with the, the the way the characters are formed and also not forgetting the bull now coincidentally in indonesia there's a bull called the banteng so we thought hey perfect opportunity let's also include that in yeah. as a strong mascot that you know ties in the whole cowboy strength yeah. to it and all that localization was really to again like get the local community to rally behind the brand and you know be proud of it and also not forgetting the tone of voice so when yeah, you think so about concrete cowboy you know it doesn't sound wimpy right it sounds really strong yeah. it has an attitude yeah so within the belt buckle we also included a brand slogan which is super kuat yeah super which means kuat. super strong beyond the belt buckle what's what's around the belt buckle the belt itself right yeah so with logo design it's 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 good to create a couple of versions of the identity um, we usually say that there's the full version and then a shorthand version like stripped back version of a brand identity um, so in this case we built the belt buckle in isolation but also an extension of that where we actually uh, created. created the belt itself and actually on the belt we have more localization it's inspired by the local Sumbawan fabric textile a logo is just one aspect mm -hmm. so let's talk about the color mm -hmm. because that's obviously a big statement in mm -hmm. itself the color itself we knew that in the brief it was specifically mentioned that you know it has to be something that's really bold and strong mm -hmm. uh, something of high contrast yellow you know because construction yes because the brand identity itself already steers really really far away from what you would normally think of a concrete branding you know why not retain the yellow yeah. color right so that it kind of reminds people you know it's it's meant to be for the concrete industry it's interesting you say that because you know when you get a brief where it's like oh mm. you can take it completely as far mm. as, as possible and you know especially designers are like yay that's mm. like amazing let's mm. like just go all out but you can go too far sometimes mm. and and think about still like the industry that you're in mm. and the product or service that you're selling and then the pink yes pink or the magenta we think that it's a it's a great color that complements the yellow and again if mm. you want to be really disruptive why not use a color that's not really commonly associated with concrete in the contrast as well with the mm -hmm. yellow it works really really well let's talk about the tone of voice to start off we developed super kawat mm -hmm. which is like super strong mm -hmm. right so then we started to develop language mm -hmm. um, where the brand could really be like tongue-in-cheek mm -hmm. about you know being a cowboy mm -hmm. um, and things like that so mm -hmm. and that came through in kind of when we design the advertising and you know any kind of messaging that we do we also you know need to maintain this strong standout um, cowboy attitude we are hard <laughs> and strong. strong yes you know it all comes back to the concrete mm -hmm. concrete has to be hard and strong so a tongue-in-cheek messaging but it also makes sense to the product mm. that the brand is selling. You know, when we wrap all this up together, the language, the identity, the color, the typography, the typography style, I mean, it all has a consistent, bold, strong approach. Mm. Um, and that's where it's really important to think about all the elements of the brand um, so it has a cohesive message to it. So, once we are happy with the core identity, it's time 
to move on to the brand applications. Mm. So with concrete, you have the mixer truck, which is a great, great yeah. uh, platform for advertisement. Yeah, I, I think that was the main mm -hmm. application in the beginning mm -hmm. was what to do with the truck. I mean, as mm -hmm. Marilyn was just about to say, it's a moving billboard. billboard. During the, I guess, the launch phase of the brand, um, it was great that the, the, the client was open to having a different messaging um, on the different trucks. Mm -hmm. So we had big brand identity on the truck mm -hmm. um, as well as the messaging to go along with that. And it was um, that, you know, the cowboys in town mm -hmm. and, you know, it was a really good opportunity to advertise It's great the brand. to make people aware of this new branding, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's why we have Concrete Cowboy, really large, really proud on the, the mixer drum itself. Yeah. And then on the next phase, you know, we heroed the bull, mm. that's another strong aspect of the branding. It's a spirit animal of yeah. concrete cowboy. So when designing, you know, the brand, think about the different assets that you can create, you know, within the brand. So with the belt buckle, within that belt buckle, each of those elements that tell a story become actually a, a different asset, graphic asset for the brand. Mm -hmm. That so, you could extend yeah. to the different so applications. We were able to take out Mm -hmm. pick and choose what asset we wanted to mm -hmm. take out and mm -hmm. actually extend its personality mm -hmm. out onto mm -hmm. application. Yeah, so we have the filigree elements, mm -hmm. which is the inspired by the traditional wood carving. We have the banteng, we have the tone of voice, yeah. we have the Sumbawan fabric textile, the holding shape. Yeah. It's a lot of elements that we can really so with play that, with. With that said, we've actually started to build a character, mm -hmm. the cowboy itself, Cowboy Kent. By having a lot of personality and story in it, we're able to continuously, you know, extend the brand out and create new assets and build on the assets we already have. So it has a lot of room for scale as a brand uh, visual identity. So with all that said, Marilyn, what do you think about the outcome? It sure makes an impact. And it sure <laughs> looks super quad. Quad. It has been really, really fun to craft a brand that looks very ornate, you know, with a lot of details that speak a lot of message, but at the same time, it's very localized to where the brand lives. Does Indonesia justice? I think it has a very strong aesthetic that speaks to the local Indonesian community. In fact, we've heard that the client was also super happy with it. And a lot of the employees feel great pride to work with such company that has such a strong, bold mm. presence, very distinctive and memorable in the community. I think most importantly, it's great to create a branding where you can feel a sense of pride, mm. both for ourselves and the client, as well as others who are exposed to the brand. You know, it's really important to be able to build brand fans that could rally behind. So tips and tricks. Number one tip, don't be afraid to push the boundaries. But when you do, there has to be a good reason for it. When you think the idea is too crazy, it might be just uh, that crazy where it actually works and it's actually different from what everyone else is doing. So just keep an open mind, but always have a backup. If you're gonna push something really far, have something here and something here, just in case. <laughs> yeah, and I think my tip would be, you know, when you're, when you're stuck on something, when you're stuck about how to progress with the, the brand project, you know, think about simple things as basic as going back to the keywords associated with it. And then from there, it could help to inspire you with what sort of uh, depictions and what sort of elements that you could portray to be part of the branding identity itself. Um, and also most importantly, when you create a logo, think about how the assets could spread into the different applications because you could have a really amazing logo yeah. and then when it comes to application, you could be like stuck because yeah. there's not enough 
there's not enough legs that you could use to yeah. spread it across. And that's and not enough personality. Mm. And that's something a lot of people forget. They think mm -hmm. when they think of branding, they just think it's a logo. When it's not. Like mm -hmm. a logo is just one aspect of a brand. Um, so when you're designing or when you're, you know, uh, wanting to create your own brand, think about branding as a whole. It's everything. It's not just the logo. It's the messaging. It's the color. Tone of um, voice. Tone of voice. How it makes you feel. All the applications yeah. where you see the brand. Um, so really see the whole picture. Lastly, every industry can have a great branding no matter what it is. In this case, concrete. Most importantly, have fun. Have fun. Well, I think that's a wrap. Wrap. <laughs> So, hope you all enjoyed this episode of Shrink Wrap. Don't forget to like or comment if you have any questions, put them below. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe um, so you can stay up to date with more episodes of Shrink Wrap where we shrink down our big design insights and wrap it all up for you. Well, until next time, bye! Shrink Wrap! I got my big bow buckle ready for the job. Giddy up, let's get in the truck. Concrete cowboy, that's my name. And concrete is my game. Yeah. It's my game. It's my game.